The entire world is watching the presidential election in Iran for signs of where that country is headed. Tonight, the voting is over, but both major candidates are claiming victory. It's a battle between a hardline incumbent who's antagonized the United States for years and an opponent promising change. Elizabeth Palmer is in Tehran tonight. Elizabeth, this, good evening. This uh, election has been a, wide, a wild ride all the way, and it's remained too close to call right to the very end. In fact, today when we were going around from polling station to polling station, we found candidates so dominated whole neighborhoods that it was just impossible to get any sense of which way the vote was going. First, the challenger, Mir Hossein Musavi, claimed in spite of dirty tricks at the poll, evidence showed that he was the winner. An hour later, sources in President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad's camp claimed that he'd won. Both sides are clearly digging in, even though official results aren't expected until tomorrow. When voting began this morning, the two main candidates appeared to be neck and neck, and Iranian voters were determined to have their say from the moment the doors opened, especially young people who make up 70 percent of the population. Bobby Batman Gelic left Iran for the U.S. 30 years ago, but came back for the first time today to vote. I think it's perhaps the tipping point for the youth in Iran. In what sense? I think they have an opportunity to cast the vote and perhaps for the first time make a difference. Millions of young people are desperate for more freedom. And they also hope a shift in politics here, as in the U.S., may open a door to a new era, a sentiment echoed today at the White House. Whoever uh, ends up winning uh, the election in Iran, uh, the fact that there's been a robust debate hopefully will help uh, advance uh, our ability to engage them in new ways. And I'm really optimistic about Mr. Obama. He's a really uh, good guy, especially for the relationship of Iran and uh, America. Since 8 o'clock this morning, this has been the scene outside polling stations across the country. Iranians have turned out to vote in record numbers in the most bitterly fought political contest in the country's history. Against a background of frenzied campaign rallies, hardline President Ahmadinejad and his main reformist opponent, Musavi, traded charges of lying, mismanagement and corruption. Today, opposition officials said they're worried that Musavi's win wouldn't be recognized by the government and millions of his frustrated young supporters would turn on the regime. Mohsen Mirdamadi is an opposition strategist. I, I can't imagine what will happen. But I think it will be a difficult situation. Dangerous? I, I hope not. All of Iran is on edge tonight, <laughs> waiting to see which candidates' victory claim the official numbers support. Now, there are some early returns coming in. The Iranian Electoral Commission has announced it's counted about 20 percent of the votes. And of that, they're saying President Ahmadinejad has got about 80 percent. Now, even if that's from the rural areas, which are his base, it is a startling, I would say shocking statistic. Maggie? And Liz, it certainly conflicts with the images that we've been seeing all week there of tens of thousands of people taking to the streets for the opposition. How skeptical should we be of these claims? Oh, I think they're going to be not only skeptical, but angry and probably want to hit the streets. Uh, but we already hear there may be a crackdown to prevent any large public gatherings tomorrow to stave off exactly that kind of thing. Maggie? Elizabeth Palmer in Tehran, Iran. Thank you, Liz.